This conference will now be recorded. Our today's speaker will be joining in a short while from now. I request the audience to keep their mic mute and screen off. If you have any query, you can drop it in chat box, just like yesterday. Myself, Dr. Karle Gitanjali, on behalf of PMT's Ayurved College, Shevgao, I welcome you all to join second day of National Webinar Nirmiti, Fascinating Wonders of Embryonic Development. We are deeply honored to welcome our today's eminent speaker, Dr. B. G. Kulkarni, Principal and Professor HOD, Rachna Sharad Department from Paril Institute of Ayurveda and Research. I now invite Dr. to introduce the speaker, Dr. B. G. Kulkarni. Dr. Rakhi Sharma, Madam. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So, good morning, all. I once again welcome you to join this webinar on an interesting topic of Nirmiti that is fascinating wonders of embryonic development. I would thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to introduce our today's eminent speaker, Dr. Bhagwan Gangadhar Kulkarni, who is MD PhD in Rachna Sharid. He is presently working as a principal professor and HOD in Rachna Sharia Department at Parul Institute of Ayurveda and Research Center, Vadodara, Gujarat. Also, he is serving as UG and PG teacher and PhD guide. In his vast experience of 20 plus years of academic and administrative career, his achievements are great and going on. He has been the member and board of director of various committees at the Parul University, Vadodara, Gujarat. He has always updated his knowledge by attending the training by the national NABH, NAC, and national bodies such as Ayush. He has also served as the chief coordinator and chairperson for the Ayush, NABH, and NAC programs. He has been the eminent speaker at various national and international seminars and webinars. He has not only participated, but also hosted and organized more than 24 national and international seminars, conferences, and the reorientation program for the teachers. He is having 20 plus national and international publications in a reputed journals by his name till now. Sir has also been awarded with the Ashwin Award by the Gujarat Ayurved Research Center and Development Center, Vadodara. He is also an editorial board of the biannual journal, Nyanastrotas. So, I request our today's speaker, Dr. B.J. Kulkarni, sir, to enlighten us with his knowledge on today's topic, that is, the formation of germ layers and its derivative. Thank you. Sir, please continue. Uh, present PPT. Yeah, share. Hello. Can you share my PPT? Hello, madam. Can you make me present us? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. What just a minute. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
एडमिन Is it visible? Yes, sir. You are visible. Okay. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, at the outset. Sri Adhanvantare Namaha. I bow down before the God, uh, God of Medicine, Lord Dhanvantari, respected principal of uh, PMT's Ayurved College, Dr. Uh, B. T. Shinde sir, and uh, respected uh, head of department of Shari Rachana, Dr. Uh, B. C. Vikhe sir, and the organizing secretary of uh, this program. Dr. Gitanjali Karle, Madam, and other eminent teammates of uh, this event. I uh, congratulate uh, very heartily for uh, this entire team. Hello, sir. And uh, in this lockdown period, the college is keeping all the students and faculties Hello. very active Hello, and alert. And uh, camera, sir, I'm very camera, happy. Visible with me, sir. PPT share the different camera. This is the now. Now is it visible? No, sir. No. Before it was visible, sir. Is it visible now? No, sir. No, sir. No. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, I have. Now, is it visible? Madam, is it visible? No, now camera is off, sir. Screen is on and camera is off. Something is going wrong. Uh, camera, Amara, we on here. Yes, yes. Now. The Doni pan on. Doni la pan present. Ha. Madam, at this time, Madam PPT, me, me call in English. Madam, Now is it visible? Hello? Sir, camera 
दिसतोय तुमचा पण जेव्हा तुम्ही स्क्रीन शेअर करता ना तर कॅमेरा ऑफ होतोय लाईव के मोबाईल मध्ये अच्छा गोटू मिटिंग च माझ्या मोबाईल मध्ये ठीक आहे ठीक आहे पण मॅडम असं होत नाही जनरली कारण तुम्ही प्रेझेंटर म्हणून आम्हाला जेव्हा सांगितलं ना नाही ना सगळ्यांची बंद का करून तुम्ही मग तुम्ही फक्त त्यांना त्यांची सगळ्यांची बंदी नाही का तुम्ही तर जी आता दिसते का बघा अभि दिसत आहे वेळ दिसतो आता व्हिडिओ दिसतोय हा ठीक आहे सर ओके कम्फर्टेबल इज इट इज इट विजिबल येस सर Hello both are visible can i start yeah. yes sir can i start yes sir please okay thank you very much okay i i congratulate uh, department of uh, shadira rachana of uh, PMT's uh, Ayurved College for uh, conducting uh, this type of webinars uh, even during the uh, lockdown period also uh, you have made students and faculties uh, and other beneficiaries uh, alert and uh, this is a need of an hour that such type of seminars and webinars should take place in each college i am very really happy that you have taken a very good step and uh, the title which you have kept for uh, this particular program is nirmiti which is very relevant and uh, in continuation to this uh, nirmiti let us have a knowledge of nirmiti of garbha okay so as you know uh, ayurveda is a very ancient uh, science and uh, very scientific study uh, had been taken place uh, in our uh, science even uh, 5000 years back uh, when there was no any advanced technology even during that period also our acharyas have observed the minute changes of development in the fetus which are very appreciable and uh, basically they start uh, with the concept uh, uh, garbha samagri that is a rutu kshetra ambu bija or rutu a particular uh, fertile time is very important for uh, conception then kshetra kshetra is a body uh, in which or the uterus in which the fetus is going to 
develop and grow and uh, ambu is a nutrition and bija is the seeds and even modern also defines the same thing it is a branch of a biology or a branch of a science which studies about the development and formation of a human embryo within the uterus and based on the development and the development of uh, different systems and organs they have bifurcated the period of the development pre organogenesis is a period initial 14 days period is considered pre organogenesis where these three germ layers are going to form and out of these germ three germ layers uh, different systems and different develops uh, different uh, organs are going to uh, develop and after that embryonic period is considered 3 to 8 weeks embryonic period where the embryo will start to develop where in a very minute form or a very uh, a very minute form different organs and different systems start uh, developing and then after ninth week till 26th week okay the period is considered as a fetal period and then the pre perinatal period that is from 26th week to till birth so during these periods we get different stages of development in the embryo and fetus here two different terms have been used embryo and fetus because their development their, their uh, developmental stages are totally in uh, a different way and different stages uh we'll not go in detail for the spermatogenesis and oogenesis already you know the sperms are going to produce in the testes and uh, the oogonium which is going to produce into the ovary uh, and uh, there will be a different st uh, stages of a follicular development and uh, then the secondary oocyte will uh, secondary primary oocyte and secondary oocyte these are the different uh, stages uh, uh, i will not go in detail in this uh, and even uh, just before starting the main topic uh, just i will uh, remind you about the menstrual stages because the menstrual stages has got a very important role in the total uh, conception to development okay so uh, this menstrual cycle is uh, is it is it's like a, a drama you know it is uh, taking place in two different uh, uh, sets or to different uh, uh, stages so one stage uh, or one event is occurring in the uterus and one event is occurring in the uh, ovary and uh, in the uterus once again there are three stages like a menstrual stage then the proliferative stage and the secretory stage okay these three stages in these three stages uh, different uh, um, Uh, structures in the endometrium are uh, going to seen and the endometrial uh, vascular arrangement uh, will be seen in a different way uh, in a different stages at the same time at the same time the events which are occurring in the uh, ovary where there will there, there will be a follicular phase in which the follicles are going to develop okay and then the ovulation particularly on 14th day the ovulation is going to take place and after the ovulation the corpus luteum is going to develop and this corpus luteum starts uh, uh, different changes in the endometrium by secreting different hormones and that is why that particular phase is called as the luteal phase in this way two different events are taking place when there is a ovulation on 14th day okay the proliferative phase will be there in the uh, in the uterus and after 14th day immediately the secretory phase uh, starts secretory phase and there will be and during the secretory period phase the glycogen and the nutrients which are needed for the zygote if fertilization takes place then 
uh, there's a need of a nutrients and then these nutrients will be stored within the endometrial glands and that is why the endometrial glands in the secretory phase are very prominent and engorged and even the vessels are also very prominent this is important uh, uh, change taking place Uh, the same thing now just now discussed like the uh, follicular phase ovulation and uh, luteal phase i will not uh, take much time am i audible madam hello yes sir yes yes sir. Yes, sir. yes okay thank you let us uh, let us uh, uh, let us put up light on the process of fertilization okay uh, after ejaculation of the semen in a vagina, okay, the sperm literally swings. During the ejaculation, okay, the sperms which are present in the semen are not that active. But when the semen is going to deposit into the vagina, and uh, th there will be a uh, there will be a, a clotting of the semen for uh, 30 minutes, and after clotting. Uh, after 30 minutes, uh, it is liquefied, and during that period, during that period, the sperms become very active. After uh, after liquidation of that, the sperms become very active. When sperm is traversing through the vas deferens, there are many inhibiting factors going to release from the vas deferens, and these inhibiting factors are. Uh, inhibiting the activity of a sperm and some lipid molecules are uh, going to collect on uh, acrosomal cap okay at any cost this acrosomal cap should not be ruptured when the sperm is transported through the tubular system that is was difference was difference or the urethra and all okay that nature will take care okay and when this semen is going to deposit into the vagina uh, these all inhibiting factors are going to wash off from the hello 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 sir hello 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 Yes, sir. You are with me now. And uh, these sperms, these, these inhibiting factors which have deposited uh, or the body of the sperm, these will be washed off and now sperm becomes very active. And as you know, the, the prostaglandin, which is a very important component of a semen, will, uh, will set a kind of moments in the uh, muscles of uh, uterus and uh, contractions are very, very particular type of contractions are going to produce along with the flagella activity of the sperm and the uh, the contractions present uh, in the uterus uh, the sperm very fast uh, it reaches uh, to the site of uh, fertilization meanwhile the as i said the inhibiting factors are washed up and now the sperm is very active and you know on alternate month from each ovary one ovum is going to release okay and there is a kind of a chemical reaction takes place that is called as a chemotaxis okay chemotaxis takes place and some signals are going to recognize by this sperm from which side ovary the ovulation is taking place okay sperm will come to know and exactly in that tube the sperms enters okay and uh, uh, as it uh, enters it enters meanwhile the ovulation has taken place in the ovary and the ohum has come out in the area of uh, uh, ambulatory area of the tube okay and uh, as you know the when there is a ovulation the ohum uh, uh, ohum will be ovulated along with the 
a group of cells okay that is called as the corona radiata the granulosa cells will be covering uh, from all side over the uh, ohum okay and this corona radiata will be uh, corona radiata is nothing but the granulosa cells and these cells will be dispersed by releasing a, a, a chemical from the acrosomal cap of a sperm hyaluronic acid okay hyaluronidase which helps to disperse the all the uh, cells and directly it reaches to the zona pellucida and when it reaches the zona pellucida immediately the acrosine which is a, a very strong enzyme uh, 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 present within the cap acrosomal cap is going to release and this will dissolve the zona pellucida it is a glycoproteinous pro, uh, layer present uh, around the ohm okay and in this way the entire sperm sperm middle piece uh, particularly the head middle piece tail will enter into the ohm okay and then there will be a detachment of the head of the sperm and uh, then the nucleus which is present there uh, within the nucleus the chromosomes genetic material which is present there that will come out and now that genetic material or that uh, nucleus is referred by the name pronucleus male pronucleus meanwhile meanwhile when female pronucleus has already formed there the genetic material and here what happens the second meiotic already the meiotic spindles have formed there the, the the fertilization second meiotic second meiotic cell division has uh, taken place and three polar bodies are seen in the picture now you can see and see these three polar bodies are going to disintegrate and meanwhile these two male pronucleus and the female pronucleus are going to join with each other and the genetic material which is present within the pronucleus will be mixed properly meanwhile the spindles have developed spindles have developed and uh, immediately there will be a replication of a dna so 23 plus 23 46 and one second 46 plus 46 okay this sets of chromosomes are going to form and uh, at one side at one pole i can say these spindles are uh, are pulling the particular set of uh, chromosomes and in this way the two cells have formed there and from here the development starts usually the student think that after uh, mixing the pronucleus male pronucleus and female pronucleus as two genetic material have come together and there will be a one cell stage but actually there is no one cell stage usually we think that there may be a one cell stage no directly two cell stage is going to form there okay and these are called as daughter cells in the beginning when these two daughter cells are formed these are in equal size okay and the size of both the cells are equal but further what happens one cell once again divides and totally there will be three cells another cell divides and then there will be a four cell stage then the five then the six then the eight cell stage like that multiplication is going to form there and this process is called as cleavage okay now in this picture you can see uh, uh, there will be a development of two uh, and a cell division of the two cell stage to four cell then the six cell then the eight cells like this like this a uh, multiple cells are going to form there and now this if you compare the size of the cells in the beginning these cells were larger in the size but as the cell division takes place their size will be reducing reducing as the as the number of cells are going to increase and eight stage then the 16 cell stage will form and that stage is referred by the name marula because it looks like a mulberry uh, that is why it is called as the malvera uh, malvery uh, morula uh, which is uh, 16 cell stage now you can see now you can see uh, in this picture 
okay two cell four cell six cell and marula and when it comes to the uh, uterus okay in a marula stage at the 16 cell stage and that reaches to the uterine cavity and implantation will start this process is called as the cleavage now when it reaches in the uterus exactly what happens let us discuss the endometrial stage of a uterus during this stage the endometrium will be in a secretory phase it means that the endometrial glands are studded with the glycogen and other nutrients watery part fluid part will be there okay and now the ground is ready and as the zygote comes arrives in the uterine cavity some amount of fluid is going to enter into the zygote and now you can see in this picture yes this color uh, is indicating the zona pellucida means zona pellucida is still intact still intact till it reaches into the uterine cavity okay now very important event has taken place here is a kind of uh, fluid is has entered into the zygote okay and and due to this due to this there is a formation of a cavity and within this cavity within this cavity uh, fluid is there and that is why this particular structure now referred as a blastocele and the entire structure is called as blastocyst now uh, you observe this figure observe this figure some cells are there in the center and some cells are at the periphery okay in this picture you can see there is a blastocystic cavity some cells are present in the center uh, and some cells are arranged over the peripheral part because of a entry of a fluid the central cells are pushed one side and the peripheral cells are arranged on the periphery now the cells which are arranged on periphery are referred as a tropoblast and the cells which are present in the center are called as embryoblast these cells are called as embryoblast and this embryoblast cells are going to derive different organs and the systems and this tropoblast is going to develop the protective membranes it may be uh, uh amniotic membrane or placenta okay these protective membranes are developed by this tropoblast and the centrally situated embryoblasts are develop a proper embryo that is why it is called as the embryoblast and now what important event has taken place the fluid has entered and uh, why i am emphasizing because this is going to develop as a yolk sac and a yolk sac has got a tremendous significant role in the development of different systems and even in nutrition also okay till the formation of uh, blood vessels and the placenta and other will like primary will and secondary will like okay so blasto uh, so the embryo blast have been pushed to one side let us ha huh, because of uh, because of this uh, pushing of uh, embryoblast one side okay to different poles of form okay and this uh, pole which is uh, uh, which is towards uh, one side okay is uh, hello 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 yes sir madam i am getting yes sir you are audible from some... no 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 
I'm getting disturbance because some of the uh, participants are uh, just joining and that word display is coming on my pictures. It is frequently disturbing. It is just diverting my concentration. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. We are working on See, Pranita, Andre Vaishali has left. This display is coming there and it is uh, obscuring okay. my okay. images. Okay. Is it possible to avoid that? All the time I have to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yes, sir. We are working on form. One pole, this embryo blast are going to concentrate there. And this is called as the embryonic pole where the embryo proper is going to develop. And opposite to that, opposite to that, okay, one more pole is there. This is called as the embryonic pole. So, in this way, two poles form there yes this we discussed now before going to the implantation implantation is also a very uh, interesting uh, event okay uh, once implantation process starts just before starting because endometrium as you know endometrium will be uh, in a secretory phase and now endometrium changes its name because after delivery this endometrium is going to shed off and this is not permanent that is why this endometrium now referred by the name decidua because decidua is uh, not true the meaning of the word decidua is not true okay a uh, pseudo decidua okay so decidua basalis decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis these three terms now have entered or introduced during the development. Okay. Here, implantation. Before going to see the process of the implantation, you should be familiar with the three terms, decidua basalis, decidua capsularis, and decidua parietalis. Okay. So, exactly what happens in the Implantation process, the zygote as zygote arrives in the in the uterus, uterine cavity, the zona pellucida, which was the protective layer present, that zona pellucida disappears. And the tropoblasts, which have arisen on periphery, have a tendency to destroy or disintegrate the other cells in which these tropoblasts are coming in contact. Okay. So these tropoblasts as zona pellucida, zona pellucida is going to disintegrate there and these tropoblasts are exposed and these tropoblasts will start to disintegrate the endometrial cells or endometrium, endometrial glands. And now in figure B, you can see there will be a disintegration of our endometrial cells and gradually gradually this zygote is going deeper deeper okay within the thickness of a endometrium and then after certain stage there will be a proliferation of a endometrial cells over this topoblast and there will be a deposition of a fibrin and uh, there will be a proliferation of a endometrial glands and in this way the uh, the zygote is going to buried literally within the thickness of a uh, endometrium now what is decidua capsular is then the part of an endometrium which has covered over the zygote is a decidua capsularis and a still part of uh, endometrium is there below the zygote okay and that particular part is decidua basalis which is present at the base that is why it is called as a decidua basalis and these uh, endometrial glands which have covered over the zygote that is called as decidua capsularis okay now what happens this implantation will take place in a particular area of a uh, uterine cavity and remaining part of the uterine cavity 
and that endo uh, on which the endometrium is there and that particular part of the endometrium is called as decidua uh, parietalis now i will show you here you can see in this picture the entire this is a uh, pink uh, figure which you are seeing is the zygote and uh, uh, just below that there is a decidua basalis that is the part of a endometrium only and a light blue color uh, figure or a line you are seeing here is the decidua capsularis and the remaining part of the endometrium other than this implantation site which is seen here is called as decidua parietalis and this is the endometrial lumen okay uterine lumen sorry okay in this way implantation is taking place because these are the very important events taking place of course we are going to concentrate on germ layer formation but along with that the simultaneous development is to be taken into consideration uh, usually uh, what happens in the uh, embryonic development simultaneously all the development will start but for explanation purpose we have to concentrate on a particular area uh in this way uh, the implantation has taken place now further next what happens uh, our main topic starts from here formation and differentiation of uh, trilaminar germ disk uh, the particular word disk is used there this is round and germ disk means from these three layers only different systems and different organs are uh, going to uh, develop that is why it is called as a germ disk and three layers are uh, formed here now let us consider in this picture in this picture the inner cell mass embryoblasts are seen here and the cells of the inner cell mass which are present towards blastocene blastocene is the entry of a fluid okay uh, where this fluid filled space is there the cells present towards this fluid filled cavity are differentiate into the flattened cells and now these cells are referred as endometrium usually when we talk or when we teach we say ectoderm mesoderm endoderm like this we say but in a reality during developmental process okay first endomet endoderm is going to develop first flattened cells okay which are present towards the uh, cavity the cells of the inner cell mass okay and then immediately uh, the cells uh, remaining cells of a inner cell mass they develop as a or they turn into the columnar cells and it is referred as ectoderm so two layers have formed here two layers have formed one is the endoderm another is the ectoderm two layers are formed and till now the mesoderm has not formed the mesoderm will form later before that uh, some changes are taking place let us have a look on those changes which are going to take place before the development of a mesoderm okay next is development of a amniotic cavity and amniotic fluid because amniotic cavity amniotic fluid has got a very significant role let us discuss this as you know the endoderm the flattened cells endoderm is already formed ectoderm columnar cells above that how formed and above the ectoderm but towards the topoplastic layer uh, of course in the periphery topoplastic cells are there okay and the towards the periphery uh, topoplastic cells a small cavity is going to develop and this small cavity just above the endoderm okay this is called as the amniotic cavity and above that some topoplastic cells are going to differentiate into the amniogenic cells amniogenic cells 
and these amniogenic cells start secreting fluid and this fluid is going to stagnate or store into this amniotic cavity and now this is referred as amniotic fluid in the beginning a very small cavity very small amount of fluid is there and this fluid is secreted by amniogenic cells and these amniogenic cells are derived from the tropoblasts and these tropoblasts are present in the periphery that is what it is called as a tropoblast okay so one more important event we have reviewed here is the formation of amniotic cavity amniogenic cells and this amniotic cavity and amniotic fluid is present or it is in very close contact with the ectoderm in reality uh, in the in the complete development the fetus or the embryo floats within the amniotic cavity filled with amniotic fluid and skin of the embryo or the skin of the fetus is in contact with the uh, amniotic cavity okay one more cavity has formed that is the cavity of a blastocyst uh, 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 just now i discussed this further this cavity of the blastocyst is converted into the yolk sac how these flattened cells endodermal cells are going to line within this tropoblasts there are two opinions some says that these cells in this picture you can see these how lined within the tropoblast some expert says that these are derived from the tropoblast and some expert says that these are continuation of this endoderm only here important is to know the development okay so we will consider one thought endodermal cells are going to line still these are flattened cells and now a primary yolk sac has formed before this blastocystic cavity after formation of a lining of a endodermal cells this blastocystic cavity blastocyst is converted into a primary yolk sac now when you describe primary yolk sac yes it is a sac cavity filled with fluid lined by the endodermal cells and now still these are flattened states okay this is called as a primary yolk sac now we are going to discuss one more event during this development is formation of a primary mesoderm formation of a primary mesoderm yes what is this primary mesoderm you know tropoblastic cells which are arranged peripherally a thick layer of the tropoblastic cells have formed there these tropoblastic cells are multiply there in the number and a thick mass of the tropoblastic cells uh, is going to arrange around this yolk sac or amniotic cavity and these two germ layers okay this pink color uh, figure you are seeing here a very thick mass of tropoblasts as uh, are seen or the uh, proliferate there they develop there okay and this is called as primary mesoderm because primary mesoderm this mesoderm is not a germ layer this is called as the, uh, uh, the uh, external uh, extra embryonic mesoderm because the external protective uh, apparatus or organs are going to develop out of this extra embryonic mesoderm that is why and it first develops that is why it is called as a primary mesoderm it is called as extra embryonic mesoderm so extra embryonic mesoderm derived by the proliferation of a tropoblasts okay which have arranged on the periphery this is my a uh, conclusive uh, statement for understanding this extraembryonic mesoderm in the beginning for a student a new new terms have been uh, introduced uh, in the description of uh, this development that is why it is very difficult to remember these all uh, terms and just uh for that purpose i i will just repeat these terms extra embryonic mesoderm yes because 
positive develops and it's externally external to this uh, these two layers have formed that is why it is called as a extra embryonic measure now. okay now in the next step what happens in the next step within the thickness of uh, this extra embryonic mesoderm small small cavities will start to develop can you see in this picture small small cavities will start to develop within the thickness of this extra embryonic mesoderm and lastly what happens these all extra these all uh, uh, cavities are going to coalesce with each other means they join with each other and one continuous cavity one continuous cavity is going to develop one continuous cavity is going to develop here and because of formation of this continuous cavity extra embryonic mesoderm has divided into two parts one part which is present on outside and another part which is present inside and in between these two layers cavity is there and this cavity is now referred as extra embryonic coelho this is extra embryonic coelho now because of formation of extra embryonic coelom extra embryonic mesoderm divided into two layers just i am repeating okay into two layers one layer which is inside is called as splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm or or it is also called as visceral extra embryonic mesoderm and the layer which is present outside is called as the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm somatopleuric somato means outside body soma means body actually but present outside or it is also called as parietal layer of extra embryonic mesoderm so three terms you have learnt here at this developmental stage one is extra embryonic loam another is splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm three now what has happened here day by day the embryo will increase in the size day by day this this size will increase because of formation of this extra embryonic coelho and formation of these two layers okay the size of a yolk sac has reduced now and a very important change you can see here in this picture very important uh, change you see before this the yolk sac was lined by a flattened cells and these flattened cells are converted into a cubital cells you can see in this picture cubital cells are lined so the flattened cells are converted into cubital cell and the size of the yolk sac has decreased now of course amount of uh, fluid present there a small amount of fluid is also present there and now this particular structure is referred as secondary yolk sac secondary yolk sac so in the development we have learned primary yolk sac primary yolk sac is bigger in size lined by flattened cells derived from the endometrium and after formation of a extra embryonic coelho and the two layers of the extra embryonic mesoderm the size of the uh, yolk sac reduced and the inner cells become tubical and now this structure is referred as a secondary yolk sac okay this yolk sac has a significant role in the development of uh, uh, git or uh, urinary system okay other system so we will discuss later in the when we go to the individual development of a system you will come to know the role of a yolk sac okay let us move i just uh, summarize there will be a proliferation of a tropoblastic cells because of proliferation thick thickness of the tropoblast increases small small cavities are going to develop these small small cavities coalesce with each other one continuous cavity is going to form 
this continuous cavity is called as extrahemorrhagic coelom because of formation of extrahemorrhagic coelom two layers have formed one is the splanchnopleuric another is the somatopleuric okay till now you understood this now let us go to the formation of a connecting star very important structure because this connecting star only uh, uh, establishing a contact between the fetus and the placenta in the form of a umbilical cord so connecting star is a future umbilical cord so what is this connecting star let us understand okay and here i will just repeat <clears throat> the extraembryonic coelom now you can observe this extraembryonic coelom is continuous up to the certain distance or a certain stage okay this extraembryonic coelom has not entered above the level of amniotic cavity or amniotic fluid so amniotic cavity here this has not extended it means that this amniotic cavity is still attached to the tropoblast layer or a extraembryonic mesoderm this is all extraembryonic mesoderm okay so particularly within this part of a extraembryonic mesoderm this extraembryonic coelom has not entered and and this entire zygote which is attached to the extraembryonic mesoderm that much part is referred as a connecting star okay this is called as a future connecting star and now if you observe this figure the yolk sac and the disc and the layer that is the splanchnopleuric layer okay this is literally suspended within the extraembryonic coelom this is literally suspended within the extraembryonic coelom okay and now what happens at day by day size of the disc increases okay and uh, this uh, site of the connecting star will be changed and gradually it is shifted to the caudal end of the disc But till now we are unable to understand which is the cranial end and the caudal end of the disc hello madam yes sir madam am i audible yes sir you are audible okay. audience audience please mute your mic one hello, hello. sir you are audible sir yeah you are audible uh, yes so the connecting stuck will come to the caudal end okay that i will discuss in a later part okay now important event till now we seen the formation of extraembryonic mesoderm extraembryonic coelom connecting stuck and till now we only discussed the ectoderm and the endoderm this ectoderm and endoderm have developed out of the uh, blasto uh, embryo blast central cell mass which is there the central cell mass okay and now let us come once again to this disc only okay in this picture a and b are there in this picture uh the other parts have been removed this yolk sac is removed and uh, the amniotic cavity is also removed and only disc is kept here this is a disc bilaminar we there are only two layers of form that is bilaminar still the mesoderm has not developed so after development we refer it as a trilaminar okay so only disc is uh, referred here i will discuss okay uh, i'll just repeat the ectoderm are in a columnar uh, stage 
and the endoderm is in a cubical cell stage okay and important event occurs up to this stage disc is round only and uh, in a round disc which is tail end and which is head end is very difficult to determine okay and even which is right half and which is left half is also not possible to determine okay up to this stage but now what has happened here towards the endoderm at a one margin of a disc some cells of endoderm are going to differentiate into the columnar cells okay there will be a small swelling of the columnar cell seen and this particular area now referred as a procordial plate procordial plate in this a uh, peak you can see uh, there is a round uh, a peak seen round figure seen this is called as a procordial plate and this procordial plate is developed towards the endoderm and endoderm some cells of the endoderm at a margin of a uh, disc they are differentiating into the columnar cells or modifying into the columnar cells and these cells and this total swelling is referred by the procordial plate okay yes next what happens consequently what happens here now we are able to recognize as a head end and a tail end because this procordial plate always develops towards the head end and this procordial plate in future this develops as a buccopharyngeal membrane and buccopharyngeal membrane is present towards the cranial end okay and now this disc can be recognized uh, uh which is uh, uh, that disc is having which is the head end and a tail end which is the right half and a left half this easily can be recognized at this stage so the important event yes the cubical cells of a endoderm become columnar at a circular area towards one margin and this area is now referred as a procordial plate let us see what happens next next towards endoderm now some changes are taking place towards endoderm once again i will refer this figure b figure endoderm now they are columnar now they are columnar and towards tail end towards tail end of the disc now head and tail end is clear now now towards tail end these columnar cells they proliferate they form a big swelling there or a mass there out of this columnar cells and this mass you can see here this mass is referred as a primitive node or primitive streak primitive streak okay and this swelling is seen towards tail end and this primitive streak is is derived out of ectodermal cells which is always present towards the primitive streak okay now what you learnt one thing you learnt that out of endoderm at one end towards the margin of the disc some endodermal cubical cells becomes columnar cells and they form a procordial plate and that is the head end and towards tail end towards ectoderm the columnar cells proliferate they form a swelling and this swelling is referred by the name primitive streak so procordial plate and primitive streak these are the two important events taking place till the mesoderm has not formed and now what happens let us see okay these cells from the primitive streak will proliferate some of the cells of the primitive streak will proliferate and these cells will start to move on both side on right side and left side in between 
the ectoderm and the endoderm you can see in this picture the blue color ectoderm okay and light yellowish color the endoderm and this reddish color reddish color cells and these reddish color cells are derived from the cells of a primitive streak and they start to moving on both side on a entire extent of that disk and now these cells are referred as mesoderm or secondary mesoderm or intramembranic mesoderm extramembranic mesoderm we referred now this is intramembranic within the embryo these mesoderms are mesoderm is going to develop that is why okay and the total process formation of a primitive streak and this development of this mesoderm is referred by the name gastrulation this is called as a gastrulation so what important event has taken place here uh towards the ectoderm towards tail end the ectodermal cells are going to proliferate they form a primitive streak cells of the primitive streak proliferate they will start moving on either side in between the ectoderm and endoderm and they form a layer and that layer is called as mesoderm this is intramembranic mesoderm and the process of development of a primitive streak kind this mesoderm is called as gastrulation okay so now now complete three layers have been formed one is the ectoderm another is endoderm and third is mesoderm okay this is one view there is another view of a development of these three layers one few experts says that there is a formation of two two layers epiblasts and uh, hypoblasts you can see in this picture this is the layer of a epiblast and another layer is the hypoblast okay and cells from the epiblast only develop the endoderm and a mesoderm and a ectoderm there are different sort of opinions about this formation we will not go in deep in this controversy we will stick to only one concept of one only one thought which now i have explained that is that is first there is a development of a endoderm then there is a development of a ectoderm and then there is a formation of a primitive streak and from this uh, primitive streak proliferation of a cells takes place and these cells will start moving on either side in between the two layers and they form a third layer that is the mesoderm in this way we have seen the development of these three layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm and from these three layers only the further development takes place okay what happens then now you can see now you can see in this picture the red color arrow like uh, image is seen here you can see this is the mesoderm the upper uh, amniotic cavity is taken section and the yolk sac or cavity is also section and only this is displayed here okay externally the ectoderm blue color ectoderm is seen the red color endo mesoderm is seen and below that there is a endoderm okay these cells these cells will proliferate and they will just go in between an ectoderm and they 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 spread on the sheet except in the area of a prochordal plate this is a prochordal plate come to one more left side figure prochordal plate and arrowed green color lines are seen this is the direction of a mesoderm and they have spread it on either side mesoderm cells have spread it on either side but they are not spreading over the prochordal plate this is not going to spread over the prochordal plate but these cells go beyond the level of prochordal plate and they join with each other means from right side and left side they join with each other these cells it means that beyond the level of a prochordal plate also 
the mesodermal cells have formed a layer okay and now what happens uh, meanwhile uh, as i was saying that as the uh, age increases day by day the size of the disc increases and uh, the connecting stack gradually will come towards the tail end and important event to take place here is some of the cells you can see green arrow green arrow in this picture okay these are the cells of the mesodermal cell. these cells also going to enter into the connecting stack okay but at one place towards tail end the ectoderm and endoderm are in in close contact in between this ectoderm and endoderm towards tail end at one point okay uh, the mesoderm is not going to uh, uh, going to enter in between that ectoderm and endoderm particularly in this part okay this part is referred as a cloaca so the cloaca it is present at a tail end where this ectoderm and endoderm are stuck with each other and they are not allowing the mesodermal cells to enter in between okay so this is called as a cloaca future cloaca and this cloaca has a very important role in the development of a urinary system and the end system git system and all okay a cloaca will be referred there and in a procordial plate there the ectoderm and endoderm are stuck with each other means they are in a very intimate contact and this particular area is not allowing the mesodermal cells to enter in between this so at this level at the procordial plate level the mesoderm will not be there only the ectoderm and endoderm they are in very close contact in this way in this way the three layers have formed the ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm except at the level of a procordial plate which is going to develop as a buccopharyngeal membrane and a cloacal membrane which has got a role a significant role in the development of a urinary system and other systems at a bottom level okay in this way three layers have formed if you observe if you observe a b c d e pictures okay here two things are formed one is the amniotic cavity yolk sac connecting stack further in the further development when the size of the disc increases in the increases gradually gradually the connecting stack will come towards the tail end and meanwhile the placenta will start to develop and this connecting stack will develop as a uh, umbilical cord which uh, will be in contact with the placenta okay and uh, this uh, intraembryonic mesoderm this is the intraembryonic uh, this green color what you are seeing the cells these intraembryonic mesoderm cells are entering into the connecting stack okay the connecting stack is made up of extraembryonic mesoderm and i tell you you might have seen the structure of a umbilical cord umbilical cord externally covered by a jelly like material called as a wartens jelly and this wartens jelly a very protective thick uh, material this is going to develop out of the mesoderm only extraembryonic mesoderm only so the connecting stack forms by the extraembryonic mesoderm that is why whenever we uh, consider the contents of a umbilical cord mesoderm contribution is also there in the form of a uh, uh, wartens uh, jelly okay after this of course the disc of uh, uh, disc of the embryo or the, the triad uh, germ disc is going to increase in the size and uh, towards the ectoderm there will be a formation of a fold called as the neural fold and this neural fold is going to develop as a neural tube and this neural tube on both side is going to close and neural tube will 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 start to develop or derive different parts of the nervous system now this is not uh, my area of uh, uh, lecture so i will not uh, uh, emphasize it in this lecture uh, okay so just we will uh, review the events on first day fertilization on second day two cell stage on third day there will be a formation of a morula on fourth day early embryosis on eighth day 
bilaminar disc on 14th day procordial plate and primitive streak and on 16th day all three layers tri laminar germ disc has formed so this period is a, a pre organogenesis means organs are not formed only disc is formed that is why this two uh, two weeks period 16 days period is a very crucial uh, 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 during this period the woman should not be exposed to the teratogens and now let us have a look on uh, ectoderm out of uh, this ectoderm there is a very big list of uh, derivatives uh, just i will go very fast because uh, i am late because only uh, 60 uh, minutes time has been given to me uh, just uh, in a in a very express way i will summarize this uh, from ectoderm lining epithelium of a skin lips cheeks gum and a floor of a mouth in a part of a palate nasal cavities and paranasal sinuses these are all derivatives of a uh, ectoderm only even lower part of anal canal huh? even though anal canal uh, total the git is developed from the endoderm but uh, anal canal particularly the lower end is developed from the ectoderm then uh, terminal part of a male urethra labia majora and outer surface of the labia minora okay whatever outside of the body the or the, the parts are there these are all developed from the ectoderm labia majora labia minora male urethra part of the genitals only then epithelium of the cornea conjunctiva ciliary body and outer layer of a tympanic membrane these are going to develop from the ectoderm and uh, uh, ectodermal glands exocrine glands like uh, sweat gland sebaceous gland parotid gland mammary gland lacrimal gland these are all from the ectoderm only and other derivatives like uh, hairs nails enamel of the teeth lens of the eyes musculature of the iris and nervous system very important nervous system is a ectodermal origin okay and uh, in the mesodermal origin there is a uh, big list particularly all connective tissues including loose areolar tissue the deep fascia ligaments tendons aponeurosis okay the muscles like a smooth muscles striated muscles cardiac muscles heart blood vessels lymphatics blood cells kidney ureter trigon of the bladder see trigon of the bladder mesodermal okay part of the male and female urethra yes it is mesodermal and but the uh, end of these male and female urethra are from ectoderm this is where and that is why the painless condition and painful condition in the pathology is seen see the external piles are painless because external external piles are painful because these are derived from the ectoderm where the nerve supply is there uh, somatic nerve supply painful and inner part of the uh, anal canal where the internal piles are there they are painless because the auto autonomic nervous system supply is there okay so based on the Uh, development uh, different uh, presentations of a pathology will be seen o ovary uterus uh, uterine tube upper part of vagina okay test this there is a big list because of shortage of time i cannot discuss in detail and the endoderm lining epithelium part of a mouth palate tongue tonsils pharynx and git particularly esophagus stomach small and large intestine anal canal upper part okay and the pharyngo tympanic tube middle ear inner layer of a tympanic membrane mastoid antrum air cells respiratory tract gall bladder extra hepatic duct system pancreatic ducts these are all derivatives of a endoderm only okay so this is about the derivatives and uh, uh, i will take uh, uh yes uh, as per the instructions I, i have to stop here my time is uh, over now thank you very much for giving me an opportunity and uh, to interact with you all people thank you very much i am very thankful to the management of uh, uh, pmt's ayurved college uh, i am thankful to the principal of uh, Uh, this college bt shinde sir and gitanjali kalle madam and entire team if questions are there you can uh -huh.
thank you so much sir it was a feast for us actually thanks to our honorable speaker dr b g kulkarni sir for your knowledgeable lecture your lecture was really valuable for us sir thank you so much for your precious time uh, for vote of thanks i would like to hand over the surface to dr pallavi nibe uh, assistant professor rachna shahi thank you yes thank you dr tejaswini i dr pallavi nibe feel so privileged to propose vote of thanks on this auspicious occasion of second day of national webinar on nirmiti fascinating wonders of embryonic development organized by pravara medical trust ayurved college and sant eknath ayurved rugnalaya shevgaon first of all i deem it a great honor and to be very grateful to all the authorities of maharashtra university of health sciences nashik for providing us endorsement for this national webinar now here is the today's center of attraction dr b g kulkarni sir principal hod and professor parul institute of ayurveda and research vadodara gujarat thank you so much sir for giving your valuable time we are very grateful to have you for today's session regarding to the topic formation of germ layers and its derivatives it was really authentic and detailed presentation practically as well as theory point of view i pay my sincere vote of thanks to dr bj kulkarni sir thank you also, very much thank you sir also i pay my sincere vote of thanks to dr nimesh sangode sir associate professor rachna sharit parul institute of ayurved and research vadodara gujarat i am thankful to dr mukund erende sir for yesterday's wonderful session i express my sincere thanks to dr honorable dr rajendra vikhe patil sir trustee and secretary pravara medical trust ayurved college shivgo for their support and motivation i pay my sincere thanks to dr yuvraj narawde patil sir executive director of pmt ayurved college shivgo for their constant support and inspiration i pay heartfelt thanks to our honorable principal sir dr bt shinde sir for his support and motivation also i pay sincere vote of thanks to honorable vice principal hod and professor of our rachna shari department honorable dr b c vikhe sir for always and constant support my heartfelt thanks to organizing secretary dr gitanjali karle ma'am associate professor rachna shari and also my heartfelt thanks to dr prasad pande sir associate professor rachna shari for conducting this wonderful national webinar my heartfelt thanks also to dr rakhi sharma ma'am assistant professor rachna share and also to myself dr pallavi nibe assistant professor rachna share department also i pay vote of thanks to all the faculties who has given their time and support for this webinar dr suryavamshi ma'am dr pawre sir dr dukle sir dr geete sir dr pawar sir thank you thank you so much all the delegates participants and faculties for your overwhelming response i congratulate to the organizing team of nirmiti and pravara medical trust ayurved college for conducting such a wonderful webinar successfully also thanks to our hard working students dr akshay dr wasim dr dhanashri and last but not the least thanks to our non teaching staff especially sandeep funde sir for your efforts finally thank you thank you very much one and all who has given their efforts to happen this event thank you